I guess, post run here. And today, let's talk about some tips and tricks uh, to help you get into Torchlight Infinite. Starting a new game can be pretty damn intimidating. There's a lot of things to click. There's a lot of uh, menus that you have to master. And while you do that, you have to understand how your build works. You have to understand the economy and the auction house. It's very intimidating. So what I will try to do with this video is demystify a lot of these things a little bit, make them easier digestible. You can focus on the stuff that's actually fun. Uh, also, thank you a lot for to XD or Torchlight Infinite for sponsoring this video. Always great to see when companies also sponsor small to mid-sized creators and not just the big giants. So appreciate that a lot. But with that said, let's get into the video. Now, the first thing is respecking is free until level 80. Um, so in a lot of games, you have to kind of have a plan when you start out because your decisions matter, which is great if you're playing an RPG like Witcher 3. But the problem is in a game like this that is very knowledge based, uh, you will make a lot of wrong decisions from the get go. A lot of micro decisions will not add up because at this point, you don't even understand the scope of the game, right? But yeah, you can just respect everything without charge. You can even reselect and clear and redo the whole passive tree, choose a new one. Uh, the world is your oyster. And you might say, OK, but at level 80, you have to get everything together. Theoretically, yes. But the truth is, for somebody who plays a lot, I mean, you're going to get so many of these is actually insane. Basically, you're never going to run out of these. Uh, but at the start, when you reach level 80 and you want to respick immediately, you don't have these. Just know that it's going to take a little bit of time to farm them up. But they're de definitely a lot more accessible than, for example, Orb Regrets in Path of Exile. Number two is a quickie. Uh, there is a button to identify all items. So down here, you press this button, all your items will be identified. Otherwise, you have to click on all of them and it's going to say identify. Not much more to say, just going to save you a lot of time. Number three, and this is a big one, and it has to do with the auction house and price checking. So You don't have to go to your auction house here every single time to the trade house uh, or click here. You can simply price check it in your inventory. Now, as an example, let's take my gloves right here. If you click on the item, you will see this hammer up top. Now, if you click it, it will tell you how much it's worth. However, this is not the whole picture because a lot of items have different roles. Uh, for example, not every item is the same. It could be corroded. A uh, very good stat could be on it. There could be a high roll. So what you do is you click on this filter icon right here. This basically shows you everything that makes your item unique, so to say. Exactly the roles that you have on your item. Exactly is it corroded, yes or no. And you can tick these uh, search filters right here. So for example, if I ticked all of these, it would search for exactly this item, which is obviously not smart, right? You only want to tick the ones that you think are worth. So for example, I have plus two focus blessing, which is a really nice corrosion. Uh, that's definitely going to be worth something. The attack and spell crit is huge. So I have these two here and now I press search. And as you can see here, a lot more than one of each. Now, something also to know is you can click on these and actually edit them. It will tell you maximum, minimum. So, for example, if you want to know, uh, okay, let's say 91, but what about 70, right? You can confirm uh, and you can search for these. And then you will see uh, if you had a little bit less crit, then it would be worth less. So now that we checked our item, do we have to go to an auction house? Nope. We have list item right here. It will get you to the auction house directly. In this case, we saw like 200. So, let's say 179. Confirm. Um, flame Elementium for sale, and we're done. Number four, you can get 10 free pets at level 20 if you have a new account. Uh, so what you do right here is you have to go to F3, and right here you will see that you have 10 free rolls down here. If your account is new, obviously mine is not anymore, and then you can basically get your pets. And you're eligible for these as soon as you finish the pet quest. Uh, I think it's roundabout level 20, might be a little bit later if you're over leveled. But you will see down here that you have free rolls. Now, where should you invest it into? I don't have the banner anymore, but if you're new, there's a banner that basically guarantees a legendary at 30 rolls, which with all the free to play currency, you can definitely get to. Or if you're spending money, it's going to be even easier. Uh, but in total, you will not have to spend money right from the get go. The first pets are completely free. Number five, follow the quest tracker. This is a big one. I actually did not realize this, but it's not just here for show. You can actually click on it and it will tell you exactly where to go and you can follow it. This is very, very interesting during the campaign because I got lost quite a bit. You can also hide it later. Uh, but what is even nicer is it will tell you exactly what you have to do. So for example, it leads me here, but it also tells me I have to do Steel Forge and defeat the plane watcher. Now, this is going to be very important during mapping as well. So you see the steel fortune right here. And at time mark three, I have to defeat the watcher, which is here in the middle once I completed uh, six maps. And once I did that, it will update. Now, if you want to do side quests, you can also scroll down right here and it will tell you a lot of other stuff. Also, if you forgot to claim certain rewards, 
you can always do this later. You don't have to go to the NPC who gave it to you. Number six, auto pickup and loot filter. Now these are both in the options when you press escape and you go to loot down here. Uh, you have your advanced auto loot. It should be on on default, but check if it isn't. Um, it should be. So your loot filter here, non-basic, intermediate, and advanced. As for loot filter, I will tell you right now, do not go advanced unless you have the bot battle pass because flame sand, which is one of the better currencies, um, is hidden on advanced and it doesn't get soaked up by your auto loot unless you have the paid one. But in general, I would say stay away from advanced unless you know what you're doing already in the game. You have uh, quite a few hours in. Um, intermediate is pretty damn safe though. And the way you get auto loot, by the way, is if you go to season pass right here, uh, you will see that at level 15, you can redeem it. Now the XP you get here is from these quests right here, right? You just click through and you get XP um, towards your progression uh, bar right here. And once you get level 15, which for me, I think was after like three, four hours of gaming, um, you get the auto loot right here, but you have to click it. So you have to know this. Uh, and if you have the bot battle pass, it's down here. As far as I know, the only difference between these is that um, the Holy Embrace down here also picks up fuel, which if you like the game, I think is one of the best purchases. You also get Thea, which is one of the heroes um, down here. So if you already like the game and you're sure you want to play it more, you want to support them, this is one of the things I would buy. It costs $15. Uh, overall, though, you will be fine with the auto loot for a long, long time. Number seven is something that I get asked a lot, which is how do I search for something on the auction house? Now, if you go here to trade house or in the auction house, you get to trade house, you will see all the uniques lined up. So you just have to click on them, search and it will show you every one available and you can do this for strength helmet dex helmet int helmet i would also say it's pretty cool to click through here and actually see what uniques are there it will give you a lot more insight about the game and what builds are possible but uh that out of the way we also have necklace ring belt right you have if the weapons right here i guess you can't see with the cam um but basically what i'm going to say is in here it's pretty easy to navigate however if you want to search for example rares or if you want to search for very specific roles on these items or or maybe corrosions then it gets a little bit more tricky you have to go here into the advanced tab now if we go into the advanced tab the normal tab up here is for rare items now you can go to base gear and you can for example say i only want to search for ranger's broken mask or i only want to search for divine arbiter's diadem and then it gives you the search criteria right here which is cool enough right you can search for everything um but what gets a little bit more interesting is you can also search for uniques. And here the game helps you a little bit because I will give you an example here. So you go to base gear, for example, let's say dex boots, base gear, it shows you all the uniques that are possible. And for example, if I go to lone walker boots, which is boots that I want to buy right now, uh, and you go to, to search criteria, it will only show the mods that are actually on the item. So for example, if I just search for Lone Walker boots, it would show me all those boots. If you click on them, uh, you will see what they do, right? They have aura effect, but down here they have something very interesting. If it's corrupted, it says auras do not take effect on yourself. And if it's not corrupted, then it says on aura only takes effect on yourself. So basically make, making it a buff only for you or only for your minions. Now, let's say I want this for minions. I have to first choose the Lone Walker's boots. I go to search criteria. And then I go down here and it basically auras do not take effect on self. You tick it, it's here. You go for search and now it only shows you the ones with this mod. And you can do the same for rare items. Just that with rare items, you will have to uh, know what you actually want to go for. So for example, let's say old king's crown search criteria. There's obviously a lot of mods here. So you have to use the search function. It's basically the same thing. Uh, also, you can click on here. Let's say there's like a specific amount that you want at least. Let's say we want at least... 30 critical damage on this helmet. Boom. It only shows us the ones that have uh, 30 or higher crit damage. And just to point that out, you can do that with a lot more mods. Now, I don't think it, it will actually find something. Let's say 20 right here. And then we also go for, I don't know, let's say 20 skill area. Confirm, search. And I will only show you the ones that have both of these mods. For example, this one. Also, don't forget that these uniques have less and less energy the lower level they are. So when you do search criteria and you're looking for a really good item, you want to go item level 85 for the maximum amount of energy before you actually search. Otherwise, you might get screwed. I also want to point out that down here, you can actually search for a lot of other stuff that isn't item related, like embers, um, fuel fossils, right down here to uh, corrosion material. I guess you can't see it. Uh, proof of the Brave, even skills you can buy, like level 21 skills, stuff like that. So just click through here. This might also be interesting because a lot of these things you might have and they might be worth money. As I said in point number three, definitely use the hammer on the top right to price check your items. And related to what we just talked about, number eight, look at your inventory. Now, why do I say that? 
auto loot is a really nice thing but one thing it does is it doesn't really show you what you're dropping during a map all that much you only see the big drops but not the small incremental drops that actually make out a lot of the currency that you have a ton of people are coming to me and say they don't have any fe but it actually doesn't matter because most of your fe will not drop raw it will drop in other small currencies so i will give you some examples uh, right here for example if i go here and i see the cultivation ember right you're going to drop a ton of these uh also soul burst ember is the same and i think it was amplified if you have those you can price check them and you're like looking here and you're like 0 0.11 0 0.12 that's not really that good but if you think about it you're dropping a lot of these so 46 of these would be around about seven to eight fe's same goes for stuff like flame sand which you drop quite often um 30 to 35 of these sell for one fe so you can do the math yourself uh, if you have a big stack, that's around about 30 FE. But it gets even trickier because if you go into the last tab here, right, you have your uh, fluorescent memory fragments, which can be worth quite a ton. You might just accidentally find one that is actually worth a lot. For example, this one is okay. I think it's like one to two. Yeah, we just have one FE lying around here. And if you price this, it's going to sell pretty quickly. There is um, fluorescent memories here that sell for up to 70 to 90 FE. And you might just randomly have them and you don't know about it. Uh, that more realistic is that you have something lying around that's like five to six FE, but nonetheless, it's free money. So take it. Same goes also for, uh, the compasses. Definitely check them, especially the golden ones can sell for one to up to eight FE. Number nine, a little bit of a tech thing. If you're having issues, restart the game. Uh, so if you're starting to have, um, like kind of lags, um, that might be a memory issue. So you should go out of the game completely exit, right? Uh, go back to your browser. You restart the game. And before you do that, you click clear cache, confirm, click to start. Now I do this around about every one hour, 30 minutes or so. Uh, I don't know if this is specific to me, but I've had a lot of people have some problems with this. If you're in the future and this is not a problem anymore, which I hope it isn't, uh, then ignore this, but it can help you a lot uh, when having bad performance. And then at the end here, leveling a second character is actually easier than you think. So what you need to understand when it comes to leveling items is there is a required level and there is a item level. The required level means you can put it on at level 10. The item level means it was found in a high level area, which means you can have a item that requires level 10, which has 60, which is one off perfect. For example, you can even have 61 energy um, on your weapon, which means with items like these, you could theoretically have a six link very, very early on your main skill, which makes you a lot stronger. Um, so that's one thing. Um, the uh, level requirement on rares is bound to the base type. For example, this neck here has a lot of great mods, some of them very high tier, but that does not increase the required level in this game. Meaning if you have a, for example, crystal amulet, which is a level one neck, you can put on it whatever you want and will completely carry you through the game. Also look out for cheap corruptions. Some of these uh, leveling items drop a lot. So people just randomly corrupt them. For example, here I have scorching words, uh, uh, scorching words. I bought these for like two FE for leveling. I can just resell them later if I want the FE back, right? But you can, for, for example, get from plus one to plus two fire skill, which makes a huge difference at the start. One thing that is incredibly annoying for leveling is that you cannot simply buy level one skills. Depending on what the level the character you're on is, the higher level the skills will be that you buy. Meaning you cannot do anything. You can buy level 14 or buy nothing, which has higher level requirement, obviously. The only things that you can buy at level one are some of these auras, which have flat mana reservation. But that's not really what you want, right? For a leveling experience, you don't always want to go for what the game gives you. You want to go for the most efficient one and you will not get that from this vendor. However, there's two ways around this. Number one is you bite the bullet and you level a uh, character up to level seven that you know has the skill that you want. Uh, so different characters have different access to skills very early. And for example, I am leveling a lot of fire-based characters. At least I like it while leveling. It's just really, really good to have split firebolt and flame jet, right? You can buy this from Gemma. So what you do is you level this until, I guess, level seven-ish. Uh, and once you're in town for the first time, you can buy these and then put it in your stash and equip it on your next character. Or you go the faster route, which might cost you a little bit, but it is time, right? What's worth more than time. So you go to Trade House, you go down here, and you go to Skills. Uh, once you're at Skills, for example, let's say I want a level one leap attack. I can search for it. 
Uh, you can either go through here. For example, I already found one. It would cost me one FE. Um, this one would cost me 12 uh, flame fuel, which is a lot less expensive. If you don't find it on first glance, you can also go to advanced. Go down here. Go ahead, for example, to active skill. Go to skill name. Um, do a leap attack. If it's something down here, you can also type it in. Uh, and then go item level and you go maximum one. Confirm, search, and now you will see all of them at level one. But yeah, that's all I got for this video. Uh, there's definitely a lot more to say. So I might make another one of these. Uh, maybe this could help you out a little bit. If I forgot something, definitely put it down in the comments for people to see. Uh, but yeah, hope you learned something and see you next time. But that's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. As always, a huge shout out to my Twitch subscribers and my Patreons. I couldn't do stuff like this without you. Thank you so much for the support. But yeah, still loving the game. Um, having a blast. Definitely going to put out more educational content. Uh, I want to do more build guides, but the problem is a lot of the interesting builds I want to do take a lot of currency. And if I want people to actually have a chance at like replicating them, I need to uh, kind of put out videos how to make currency for that first. Uh, but with that being said, because I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.